Hey, Chris, how are you? Hey, Bart, doing good. How are you? Good. Well, we're here today to talk about the USA Drone Port, just to give a brief update. Uh, COVID-19 has kept a lot of people indoors, and it has us to to some extent, but we have been really busy uh, preparing for when uh, we're able to be outside and uh, preparing things for you all to be able to utilize the drone port. Um, Chris, we've had a few meetings over the past eight weeks about a grant that we're getting. Uh, I'm excited about about this opportunity and what's coming up. You want to tell them a little bit about what type of grant this is? Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we've been hard at work. Uh, we've got approved for an AML grant for $1.5 million to build an indoor flight facility. And uh, along with that, it's going to be a 10,000 square foot indoor flight area, purpose built specifically for drones. It'll be the first and largest in the world uh, for drones to do this. And then We've also got a separate section and that's going to be a indoor all weather environment to simulate high winds, temperature extremes, blowing uh, rain, humidity, dust, different effects uh, to be able to test drones while they're flying, but also for their parts and other you know, systems and sensors. So I think that'll be a unique opportunity for companies and builders to come in and, and prototype and, and test their platforms. And so we've been working hard with that and we've got the uh, engineers, architects that uh, we're about to get started on the design of that, and we should be able to unveil that probably within about a month or so. Would you say, Bart? Yeah, I think by the end of July, first of August, uh, I met with them two days ago at the drone port with uh, uh, with architects. Uh, nice people uh, seem to understand what uh, what our vision for the area really is. Uh, so I was impressed with that. Um, another thing that I really uh, like about it they're from they're really from our area so you know it uh, it's easy to communicate uh, and connect with them if there's uh, any need to do that so uh, we're really excited about it uh, we've we've talked to people about this several times in some of our webinars that we've been holding uh, unfortunately we weren't able to hold the 2020 uh, USA drone conference uh, back in April uh, we were really excited about that. Uh, we've had to postpone that till next year, but we decided that we wanted to uh, help out our sponsors and we wanted to continue to promote the drone port. So we've held a webinar series now. Uh, we've had five of those, I think. Isn't that right, Chris? Four or five? Four or five. Uh, it's, it's hard to keep track these days. <laughs> it is. Well, they run a lot of them. One into another because it's a lot of work. Chris does a lot of the does a lot of the editing, and uh, we we've, we've been communicating with uh, many of our uh, friends in the industry to bring them on, particularly the ones who have uh, been uh, sponsors of ours, and that that really helps us out a lot. Uh, it helps us put on the conference. Uh, it allows us to. Uh, tell what their uh, products are that they're selling or services and uh, we we really appreciate them so the webinar series has went really well we've had we've had a, uh, as many as almost 190 people that have registered for um for our webinar series at one point in time uh we're going to continue these uh, what's the what's the future plans of this chris well bart um we're looking at picking them back up. We're going to take a little break here in July. We've been, like we've said, we've been busy with architects and some of the site stuff. So we're looking at picking that back up probably the first week or, or beginning of August. And so we're going to schedule out the topics. Uh, all of our webinars, they're pre recorded with the panel. And then, like Bart mentioned, we edit it and then we air it live. And so we, we'd like all you guys to you know, follow us on our social media, our Facebook. LinkedIn, Twitter, so you can keep updated on when the next webinars are going to come up. And also, uh, after we air a, a webinar, we post it on our YouTube channel a week later. So, you know, if you miss it, you know, if you sign up and you can't attend, that's okay. You can either go back and watch it through the portal, or you can eventually go through and watch it on our YouTube channel. So if you've missed any of our previous ones, please check out our YouTube channel. You know, you might find a webinar that we've already gone over that might interest you. And of course, we've got other videos and We'll be putting educational content up on our YouTube channel uh, frequently as well. So please subscribe to the channel so they'll 
let you keep updated on things that get posted there as well. Yeah, with a couple of things with uh, dates coming up, uh, October the 3rd and 4th, we're having a first responders uh, kind of an advanced uh, class. It's limited registration on that, so you'll want to do that quickly. Uh, but it'll be a really big opportunity to learn about winged aircraft uh, that can be VTOL winged aircraft that can be deployed, uh, swarm technologies being added, things that are very advanced today. Uh, dealing with uh, dealing with search and rescue and with first responders. So that's just a couple of the things. It's not all of it. Uh, we're going to we're going to have uh, it'll be beyond basics, though. So this will be for people who have got their pilot's license and who know some about this. Uh, this should be something that would that'll be uh, beneficial for uh, intermediate, more advanced users. The other good thing about this interactive, it's going to be very interactive, but the great thing about this interactive uh, training that we're going to have in October is that if you are an advanced pilot, then you'll also uh, be a very integral part of it. So you'll be, uh, you'll be part of a team leadership and things of that nature. So this is an opportunity to not just uh, sit and take notes and learn, but to actually be involved firsthand uh, with people, with your peers from, uh, from around the country. Um, then we've got the, uh, USA uh, conference, drone conference coming up in April, don't we, Chris? Yes, that's uh, April, uh, what do we say, the 12th to the 14th? But if I could step back on the, uh, comp the training in October, uh, it, within the next week or two, we'll have, up, uh, we'll have the page on our website so you can go sign up for it. Uh, we're still working out what the training outline is going to be on that, but we know at least we're going to have a hands-on night flight uh, training course that we'll do one of those nights. So you can get the advanced hands-on stuff that out in the field, uh, the practical side. And we're also launching this in parallel. We're going to have an online training portal that's going to have some basic classes that you could take virtually. That's, you know, simple classroom type knowledge information courses. And so we're, we're looking at holding uh, frequent field training exercises at the site. So it's going to be the more advanced hands-on things that you need to do uh, for the search and rescue first responders that sort of stuff. Um, so we're looking at expanding that. And then in October, or sorry, April, we'll uh, have the conference. And like I said, that's gonna be the 12th to the 14th. And we'll have some of the similar program that we were gonna have this conference. We're just pushing it till next year. So we're same thing with our sponsors. Uh, you guys that's had already pre-sponsored for this one, that's gonna apply for you guys uh, next year as well. Um, but of course, if you wanna sponsor next year, you know, that's all the same to that as well. You know, uh, we welcome more sponsors. Uh, we're going to have it. We still want to have a demonstration day out in the field. So we'll have companies with the different tech uh, technologies, different training and services. They're going to come out and be able to demonstrate what they can do out at the Drumport campus. Uh, so first responders or, or professionals in the field can come out and either receive some advanced training at the same time or, you know, just get see what the technology is and how it's employed. Yeah, absolutely. So I, we, we have we have a lot of things going on in the process that these buildings that we've been talking about will be uh, under construction. I'm, I'm not sure to the extent they'll be built by April. It would be nice if some of the projects that we're working on uh, will be. We have a runway extension at the drone port for smaller winged aircraft. It'll be a 500 foot uh, runway by 40. So we should be able to pull in uh, 10 feet uh, winged aircraft there, but we also have a 4,400 foot runway. If you have uh, any need to uh, fly in to our location, uh, we have a runway that you can use. If you have a drone that you need uh, an extended uh, amount of runway space for, we can do that as well. Uh, we have builder space, which you can see behind Chris at the moment, that we, uh, that we build drones, repair, uh, and forms, just all kinds of things of that nature. But we're also uh, skinning a building. We have a, which you can see in the background there, that does not have the siding on it. And we are adding the siding and a new roof and concrete to it. It will be a hangar with hangar doors to go into. Um, and several other things. Uh, but this, uh, this grant didn't just cover the weather and the indoor flight facility. But I also want to talk about 
a little bit about what we're going to do with this. this. These areas that we have are not just static. It's not just for indoor drone flight. This can be used for ground robotics and things like that, can it, Chris? Absolutely. Um, like Bart had mentioned, you know, the, some of these upgrades, we've got a little over $2.7 million in site uh, upgrades that will go in over the next 12 months. And we're also working on other things. We're looking at uh, setting up for uh, unmanned ground vehicle uh, testing and training area and an aquatic area as well. So we can, it's basically a bit about an Olympic sized pool that you can test underwater and surface vessels with. And we're looking at getting a netted test area attached to the, t the indoor flight facility uh, here with the next 12 months as well. So you'll be, have the ability to fly from inside the five story tall internal area to out in the netted area and vice versa. Uh, and uh, we're also looking at uh, setting up as a standardized uh, testing area for ASTM NIST standards that are uh, getting published for first responders and professionals in the field. And that'll be another thing that we'll be ramping up here in the next couple of months. And hopefully we might have the first iteration of that ready by our October session as well. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd I know I was really uh, optimistic when we were talking to the architects because they're uh, really excited about uh, getting started on this too. And coming up on one of our update videos, I feel sure that we're going to have uh, some of the 3D models that our architects are, uh, will be designing over the next uh, couple of months. But we just wanted to do a, a kind of a brief update on what's going on. Right now, we're so busy that uh, often we don't uh, get newsletters out. Uh, we we uh, said we'd like to get them out quarterly. Uh, we we work and look up, and it's in a years gone by since the last one that we did. So um, we're probably uh, we're probably a little behind. But the, these updates uh, hopefully will come uh, more often. And if you all have any questions about becoming a sponsor for the USA Drone Port or if you would like to know how you can become a member of the USA Drone Port and use the flight facilities uh, when they come up and get a very good rate on those now because we're offering discounts before the buildings come in as the as our first uh, groups begin to uh, begin to come in for utilization of that. Um, if you have any questions at all about any of our upcoming uh, projects or events, uh, let us know. We'd love to help you. Absolutely. All right, Chris, do you have anything else? I, I just want to uh, close it out by saying to, you know, be sure you follow us because like Bart mentioned, we're going to start posting these videos more often. This is a little quicker and easier for us to do than, like you said, doing a, 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 a twice a year or once a year update on a newsletter. So we'll do this and we'll also start doing educational videos that are kind of shorter and more specific to topics. We may even get into discussing news or regulations that are relevant that are upcoming. You know, we a lot of talk in the community bit has been in the beginning of the year, a lot about remote ID and some of the standards uh, in the fall. I think the FA is good. They're looking at probably pushing out some revised information on that. They're gonna be pushing out some revised uh, ways to get your part 135 or operate beyond line of sight doing package delivery. That's been a big thing. We've been working some pandemic response program stuff as well. So it's taking some of our time and uh, we'll keep you updated on all that sort of stuff. And we look forward to it. That sounds great. Well, thanks, Chris. Good to see you. Yeah, you too, Bart.